Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. And I'm excited today, not only because it's another masterclass, masterclass number, I think it's 22, is that the one it is? I, I can't keep track of time anymore, but my new, there it is, my new boop shirt arrived in the mail, and I'm so excited that it came in just in time. I literally just ran to the mailbox to pick it up. Super excited, I know Jack ordered one. Hopefully, Jack, you have received yours. Uh, it is on Cotton Bureau, I don't have a link on me. I should have probably prepared that, but it came out really nice. Super cool, looks great, and this stream is gonna be full of boops. So, if you are tuning in live today on Behance, head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. Let, us, let me know who you are and where you're tuning in from. Vipin says, oh my God, is that the new Boop t-shirt? It certainly is. Um, maybe someone will be able to find a link on Cotton Bureau uh, where you can, you can purchase it. There's a bunch of different versions. This is the second Boop shirt. The first one I finally got fixed. It's the repeat grid version. And yeah, the green, the green is masked out. So it looks a little bit strange. If you're watching this, it looks fine in my field monitor, but because it's the same color as the background behind me, it is kind of masked up, masked out. But let's go ahead and hop over to my screen. There we go. And we are going to get going. I'm sure Cody's probably scrambling to find that Cotton Bureau link. I should have prepared that probably, but it is on sale right now. And uh, yeah, it's great. There's also the repeat grid one as well, which I think I designed part of it live on my masterclass, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. So today's masterclass is all about landing pages and mockups, keeping things very, very simple. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start with a simple web artboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's go for, I don't know, 1366 by 768. Probably doesn't matter what you end up going with, especially with responsive resize in action. You can make it larger, you can make it smaller. And today, again, it's all about the, the mockups. Very quick wireframing. And we're gonna do a bunch of templates and we're also going to explore the quick mockup plugin one more time. We did cover that not too long ago. But what's really cool about the quick mockup plugin is you don't necessarily need to use their templates. So I'm gonna show you how that is done in a moment. Thank you, Cody, for linking my Twitter. And I do have the, the, the shirt, this boop shirt, linked on Twitter somewhere. Again, I should have prepared these things. All right, so we've got a simple web artboard right now. And all I wanna do is just really start blocking things out. And one of the things, I'm, one of the resources I'm gonna use is the blob generator. Also something I didn't prepare. Give me one second, I'm, I'm very bad at this. It's like blob. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to the chat. I'm a, I'm a terrible streamer this week. It's been a very long week. But I'm gonna be using the blob generator to generate fun blobs that we can put on this landing page. So we're gonna start very simple. Uh, I'm gonna grab an ellipse. And I know so, this is gonna disappoint some of you. Usually I grab a rectangle. I mean, technically you can probably do it with a rectangle. But at the top here, I just want a very quick, very simple logo. And because this is very much a mock-up and a wireframe, we're not gonna make it too in-depth. We're not gonna make blob.io. Thank you, Jack. Jack to the rescue. I knew someone was gonna get it. There's also blob maker. Ooh, which one was it? Hold on. Now we have two competing blob resources in the chat. So Jack's doesn't seem to be working. So I'm gonna try this one from Ayla. That's the one. Yes, so I'm gonna move this over here. This is the one I'm gonna be using in just a moment. For some reason, blob.io is not working. Wah, wah. Maybe we all broke it. Maybe you all clicked on it at the same time and it just did not work. So I'm gonna be coming back to this in a moment. But back in Adobe XD, again, very simple stuff. The wrong class, he's starting with an ellipse. I know, Vipin, I know, maybe next time. I mean, again, you can technically use a rectangle, right? And just round out those corners like that. You can get essentially, an ellipse, but we're gonna start with an ellipse. We've got a placeholder for a logo, and we may want placeholders for links as well. And I do wanna stress stress that this is very much mock-ups and wireframes. This is not 
This is not supposed to be very practical. It's really to convey what elements are going to go on a website. A lot of websites and a lot of designs start exactly like this. And thank you, Jack, for linking the Cotton Bureau link. Here it is here. Pop this open. And yeah, here's the new Boop Pride Edition shirt. Came out really nice. And then I do have the repeat grid version. Let me actually just click on this because my Zoom thing in the latest Mac OS version is just not cooperating. And hey, everyone who's just joining. So this is the original Boop shirt, which part of it we designed live on Adobe Live. And it basically kind of takes on the repeat grid idea, right? So it kind of creates a bunch of different O's, which is kind of fun. And then we have the new one, which I am wearing right now. All right, back to this. So we've got one link and for here, speaking of repeat grids, we can go ahead and use the repeat grid. So I'm gonna hop over here to the right within the properties inspector, press on repeat grid, boop. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. Where's my boop button? There's my boop, it's working this week, woohoo. All right, I'm gonna drag out a few links. These are, you know, again, placeholder links. Of course, you can use actual text if you want to, but again, keeping things super, super bare today. And maybe later on we'll add some colors. Now this gray in particular that I'm using, I may want to use it very quickly throughout other elements. So in my assets panel, I'm gonna make sure to press the plus button beside colors. That's gonna add it directly there. I can call this, uh, I don't know, mock-up gray if I wanted to, just like that. Again, keeping things simple. That's, that's the theme for today. Now, down here, we may want to show what a header might look like. So I'm gonna grab my text tool. And for this one, I'm gonna have actual text. And this is gonna just be header line one, right? And we can use this handle right underneath and just whoop, drag it on up. First masterclass, always watch afterwards. Uh, oh, first live masterclass, welcome, Numan. Great, thank you for joining me. And hey, Julia, welcome. And Julia just wrapped up her Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So if you've been missing those, definitely go back and watch them if you're an Illustrator user or you just wanna become an Illustrator user, go back, we can rewatch them, grab the assets. And af I believe after me, let me double check, possibly. Uh, after, no, after me is Nick and Andrew. And then after that, we've got Jesse wrapping up the XD Daily Creative Challenge which is always a good time. Jesse's a fantastic designer. I'm gonna be back in, I think, two, th four weeks, something like that. We have a new host next week, and then I'm gonna be back after that. So we've got this here, and you know we could just leave it as is, because again, this is a mock-up, very simple. It's not really meant to convey style, but for some reason, just leaving it at Helvetica isn't really working for me. Of course, you could use Comic Sans. I missed it, I missed my opportunity there. We can use Comic Sans, you can use Papyrus, right? very good typefaces that everyone should be using. No, you shouldn't be using this. Uh, but one typeface I've been using lately is Baybus. I don't know how to, how, if you pronounce that just like that, Baybus, Baybus, I don't know how to, how to do that, but um, it's a pretty good typeface. And let's go for like a semi-expanded extra bold or something like that. Where's extra bold? There it is. It just looks pretty good. And I can bump this up quite a bit, right? And if I wanted to, I can also transform it. So it is uppercase, lowercase, title case, that sort of thing. Let's go uppercase, looks pretty good. And then we might just want also a line two. And this will allow us to start really defining this character style. Cause you can also, you can also define things like your line height, right? And you can really nail in, let's say 72 pixels uh, for both the line height and the actual text. Thank you, Julia, I appreciate that. So we've got this here and very similar to the colors which we added to our assets panel, we may also want to add our character style. So right over here to the left, I'm gonna go ahead and press the plus button. Vibin says, I have a strange feeling that Howard practices with Comic Sans and Papyrus at home when no one is watching. It's almost like you live with me, Vibin. Maybe I do. Maybe that's what I do in my downtown I, downtime. I just try to, it, it, I kind of like that challenge though. Maybe I'll, I'll challenge some of you who are watching this. I want you to design something that's really striking and that works with either Comic Sans or Papyrus. Now, obviously we have the Avatar movie poster that uses Papyrus and we have children's books that uses Comic Sans, but I want some of you to get creative with this. I know some of you will, you're always up for a challenge, but that could be interesting. We can do a whole daily creative challenge on Comic Sans and Papyrus. Now, if Gus is watching this, he's probably freaking out right now. <laughs> 
Oh boy. All right, so this could be, let's say the H1 header, right? H1 header, and we may want, we could either do an H2 header, or maybe, maybe, Cody just kind of reminded me, um, maybe we can do like a, a design off with Val, who does some really cool uh, streams, uh, duo streams, and the theme of that could be using Papyrus or Comic Sans within that particular stream or design. That could be fun. Cornell says challenge accepted. Yes. All right. So we've got our H1 header. Now we could do an H2 header, but we may also want, let's say a paragraph text. And for this, instead of simply clicking on the canvas, I can click and drag just like this, right? Just like that. And for this, I don't know, let's, let's, hmm, I don't know, let's see, description. Do we want to keep with the Babus font? Babus? I don't know. Description. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. If someone really knows how to pronounce this specific typeface, I did grab it from Adobe Fonts, but clear, clearly I don't, I have no idea. Uh, let's go for, probably don't need, maybe an expanded, let's say book possibly. And then of course, we definitely, since this is a paragraph body text, we definitely don't want this, this large. So I'm going to really drop this down. I think book might be a little bit too too thin possibly. So maybe we have so many different weights. Regular? I think regular could work. 22, 24 pixels, something like that. And of course I can go ahead and type in basically anything into this spe specific section. I am gonna cheat a little bit. And I don't usually do this, but if I go to my, my plugins panel, I can find the Lorem Ipsum plugin. I don't wanna waste too much time. So I'm gonna just boop, Lorem Ipsum, right? And I gotta make sure that my line height matches. That's a little bit better. So essentially now we have two lines of text and it might be a little bit too large actually, but you know what? It'll, it'll do. I think it will do. So I'll put that right about there. Now down below, we may also want, since this is, you know, a, a header that people are going to be paying attention to, we may also want buttons. And this is where we can kind of start exploring the world of components as well. So with my rectangle, I'm gonna drag one out like this. This will be button number one. I'm gonna round out the corners completely. And I'm also going to use my mock-up gray for this specific button. But we also may want a different version of this button, which is essentially an outline version. So for that, we can actually create a component. So either within your properties inspector over to the right, or your assets panel to the left, or you can also use the command and control K shortcut. I'm simply going to press the plus button. Pippin says, I'm not sure I'm watching the right stream. Howard is not starting with rectangles, not using Sophia Pro or Dunbar, and no reddish pink. Hmm. What has happened to Howard? I don't know. I'm a changed man, Vipin. I'm a changed man. So we've got our component here, and we can just go ahead and name this button. There we go. And if you saw on Twitter, I've also started to use Poppins again. I took a break from Poppins, moved on to Sophia Pro. Now I'm kind of back on Poppins, but also this Babus font, which is kind of fun. It kind of works. It's a, it's sort of like a more of a futuristic font. You know, if you compare this to, if you, you know, let me duplicate this out, and we go for like Sophia Pro, right? You can kind of see that Sophia Pro is a little bit less condensed, and it's a little bit smoother, whereas this Babus font, it's a little bit harsher and a little bit more condensed, especially if you don't use the expanded. If you go to like semi-expanded, then it's very condensed. And then the regular version, which is just up here, super condensed, but it has a little bit of a, a futuristic feel to it. So definitely, you know, depending on your projects, you may, this may work, this may not work, but I think it could work for something like this, right? And of course, now that we saved these things as character styles, there we go, I'm just gonna name this body. We can very easily change it across all of our artboards when the time comes. All right, so we've got our first button and we may want an outline version. So I'm gonna press the plus button over to the right within my properties inspector to create a new state. Of course, you can also create a hover state if you want to. And since this is a web design, you know what? Let's add a simple hover state. And for this, I'm simply going to, let's say darken the color just a touch, right? And what's cool is hover states are automatically wired up when you create them. So if I press the play button at the top to launch the preview, I can just hover and there's my hover state, right? Super cool. I'll do one more state and this will just be called outlined. And for this one, I'll go in, I'll turn off the fill and I'll set, turn on the border and I'll just make sure to set the border. I'll right click and apply as border and I'll make this a little bit thicker, right? Something like that. 
So now we have our three states. We have our hover state, our default state, and our outline. Cornell's asking, what are we creating today? Today, we're keeping things simple. We're just creating a bunch of different variations of landing pages that you can use in your projects. And time permitting, I'm gonna also show you how to create one using the quick mockup plugin, using your own elements and your own design style. Of course, they have their own templates, but uh, we'll see how time goes for that. So I'll put this about eight pixels, something like that, and just switch over to the outline state. All right, that looks pretty good. Now all this section, I'm gonna just make sure to pop it right about there. All right, now over here, there's obviously this big empty area and you may have seen lots of landing pages and websites where they have these blobs, these you know abstract shapes that kind of go, of course we could grab a, an ellipse and drag one out like this. Let's apply that color, right? and then double click on the ellipse. Of course, we can leave it as an ellipse, but we can also do things like this. So we can make our own blobs, right? If we're, if we're feeling not so lazy, we can create our own blobs. But we're lazy, right? So I'm gonna hop over to Safari and I've got this blob ma maker. And thank you to everyone who linked this blob maker. Again, I had it in my other browser, closed the browser and I forgot all about it. Uh, what's cool about this is you can make all these sorts of different types of blobs using just these controls down here at the bottom, right? And you can press this dice button to get random shapes like that you, based on the parameters that you set. And you just make these really cool, look at that one, that's fun. I can just do this all day, especially with that little animation where it just like jiggles at the end. That's a lot of fun. and. Once you've kind of landed on the blob that you're you're kind of interested in, you can either download the SVG with this button down here, or you can copy the embed code, but you can also copy the SVG directly to your clipboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that. I can hop back to XD and simply paste it. And because it's an SVG, it's completely vector, so I can make it as large as I want. I can just pop this somewhere about here. I can also change the color just like that, right? I can rotate it and now we've got this fun little blob on our design. There we go, that looks pretty good, right? Fancy, yeah, thank you Cody for putting that in there and Julia says amazing, I agree, it is quite amazing. All right, so we've got our blob and you know, when you're building out these websites, this would probably be filled with an image. So just to kind of show you how that would work, if I hop over to Finder, I've got some images here, let's go, to my Adobe stock folder. Let's say we're building out a landing page for Japan. Just drag this in. And because that, of course I rotated it, so I have to unrotate it, but because that SVG is vector and it's a shape, I can pop basically any image into that um, shape and I can continue my work, right? Super cool. Now, maybe over to the right here, we may want a little bit of a, a placeholder for social media icons. Now for this one, I'm gonna have to change the color. Maybe I'll set it to white. Now let's see. So we have 60 pixels on the, pickles? No, 60 pixels from the left. And uh, someone's asking about the background music. That is, uh, the background music is from Chill Hop Records. Fantastic band that we use for most of our streams actually. All right, so we've got these here. Maybe I'll do 16 pixels in between each. Bam, there we go, fancy. Now what's nice is areas like this, if this is social media icons, of course one would be like, let's say Twitter, one would be Facebook, one would be YouTube, for example. And let me just to kind of illustrate what I'm getting at, let me change this to, let's say a, a blue, and we'll change this one to, let's say a red for YouTube, and this one might be, I don't know, Facebook, for example, or Behance, which is like a darker blue. What I can do is I can put all three of these into a group. So I have them all selected command control G to place them into a group. And you can kind of see that inside of the layers panel to the left. And I'm gonna name this, let's say social icons, right? I should probably also be naming many of my layers. This is the blob, not the blog, the blob. And once we have these three elements inside of a group, we can turn on stacks, which is a fairly new feature in Adobe XD. Hopefully many of you have used it. If you haven't used it yet, definitely use it. It's a fantastic feature. It lets you very quickly rearrange items. You can also go to letsxd.com slash stacks. You can learn all about it there. There's also a UI kit you can download. Now, when I enabled stacks, it automatically defined the orientation. XD essentially looked at the, the way the objects inside of that group are laid out, and it determined that they're all laid out horizontally. So it gave me a horizontal stack. And what's nice is I can just jump in here and move them around. 
So if I wanted, let's say YouTube at the beginning and then Behance and then Twitter, I can very easily do that. You can also control the spacing in between either one element at a time or holding down shift and all of them at once, right? But I don't wanna to spend too much time on this. So I'm gonna just change this back to our nice little white. There we go. All right, so we have our blob, we have our social icons, we have a bunch of things at the top here, which I may want to group, whoops. Just like that. This will be our navigation. And we've got this section here. Now maybe just to give the impression that there are, maybe it's a long form landing page and you can scroll down. Maybe we might wanna peek up a little bit of content right below this area here. So I'm gonna grab a rectangle. There you go, Vipin, there's my rectangle. Drag one out just like this. And I may want, let's say three going across the artboard. So for this, I can use a repeat grid and just do something like this. I can drag these out, have a nice amount of space in between all, all of them. Make sure they nicely align to the guides that I have set up, right? Now, I could go ahead and set the, uh, the, the gray color, but you're probably noticing that because we have this blob in the background that is that gray color as well, it's kind of blending in a little bit. And for everyone just joining, if you do have questions about XD that you'd like me to cover, definitely throw them in the chat. I am peeking over from time to time. So, you know, I can definitely change this a little bit. Maybe I can just drop the color just a touch, just so it doesn't blend in. Of course, I can also change the color to blob. Or what I can do is I can ungroup the grid or create a component of these. So inside of this, create a component, right? This one will be the gray color. Now, because the other ones are, um, no, actually, let's go back to this one. Maybe this one here might be gray. And because they're components and these are instances of those components, it overrides, which is really nice. All right, Cornell says, I wonder why my designs don't look as good as Howard's. I spend a lot of time preparing these designs. Uh, it just takes practice. It's all you gotta do, just keep practicing. So essentially, we have our first lovely little landing page, right? And what we can do now is, I'm just gonna name this landing page one. And we can name, uh, we can reuse some of these things. And Julia is asking, how did you add your SVG blob into your project? So back over in Safari, we, we've been using this website, blobmaker.app, and you can control the different parameters of your blobs down here. You can also get random blobs. You can, then you can either download if my little zoom thing wants to work, it's not working, there we go. You can either download the SVG directly to your computer, or you can press this button right over here to the right, the embed one, and you can copy it directly to your clipboard, and then you can paste it right into Adobe XD, which is super cool that it's able to do that. All right, so we've got landing page one looking pretty good. I'm gonna duplicate this, and we're gonna work on landing page number two. And we're this is just gonna be a different variation of this one over here. Because when, you know, when you're building websites, even if you're not working directly with a client for this particular project, you may want a gallery or you know a file containing many of these landing pages so that when the time comes, you can just hop in there and you can just grab a landing page and just go crazy from there. So you don't have to do it from scratch each time. And if you have enough of these things, then your process will be just so much quicker. If you just spend a little bit of time creating these templates first and then using them when the time comes. Uh, Ryan says, just jumped in, love this blob thingy. I do too. And Darcy's asking, how do you draw the guides? So in Adobe XD, let me hop in here. On the left-hand side of your artboard, as you can see right over here, and the top, you have this kind of transparent hidden area that allows you to drag out guides, just like this. And there's little contextual information, letting you know how far it is from the top, the bottom, if you're dragging it from the left, you know how far it is from different objects and the other guides and that sort of thing. If you don't see that area at the top or the left, definitely go to the view menu, down to guides, and then make sure that guides are hidden, right? Right now I can hide them, but if, it, if they were hidden, I can show them. All right, so over here, we may want to reuse some of these elements, probably don't need the blob in this case, and maybe this one will be more centered. So I'm gonna grab my header. Maybe I'll center this just like this, drag this over bam, snap it into the center of my document. If I don't wanna drag it all over just like this, I can very easily go up to the very top left, top right corner and just press the align center horizontally button, which will automatically snap it to the center. 
All right. Uh, Newman is saying every after every masterclass, I get hyped to start designing something ASAP. Yes, but then you get lazy. Oh, well, I can't do much about your laziness, but I can definitely get you hyped about designing. Hopefully you can figure out how to get rid of the laziness. I get lazy all the time. Uh, coffee helps quite a bit. Uh, water, going for a walk. Definitely need water these days. All right, so maybe this one in particular, maybe down here, this might be a very simple landing page where you can enter your email address to get more information. So for that, let's create a very simple email address field in the same style we've been doing. So I'll drag one out just like this, right? And I'll apply my gray. Maybe I'll round out the corners just a touch. We don't wanna to go too crazy with this one. We don't wanna do something like this because working with an email field that's completely rounded, it's not only a little bit difficult to style, but it also could convey that the whole thing is a button. When you have something like, um, ra something rounded like this, people might think, oh, it could be a button. Hey, Laura, welcome. We are designing very simple landing pages today, very similar to this one here. We're designing a bunch of different versions, and then we're gonna explore the quick mock-up plugin in just a little bit. So for this one, I might wanna go, let's say 16 pixels. Now, you know what? I might even drop that to about eight pixels. That looks pretty good. All right, so we've got this here, and we may want a few different elements on this. Maybe over to the right, a little bit of a button. So Command and Control D to duplicate, drag that over and maybe this one here since this is a form field it should be a little bit lighter so maybe i'll do something like this and we've got our button here and i'm going to unround out these corners so i'm holding down my alter option key and just dragging those inwards just like that and there is our button there and then we might want one little area for text very similar to what we have actually up here so what i can do is i can actually copy this and just paste it Right there, let's go for 24 pixels, maybe even 16. Now 16 might be too squishy. I don't know, it might work. Pull this in a little bit and drag this out and set the border radius to about four. There's a little bit of accessibility problems here. So what we can do, there's a few things we can do, right? Uh, we can of course change this completely. So this could be a little bit lighter if we wanted to, but then it blends in with the background it's not too bad, but there are definitely some accessibility problems. I might also make, make this a little bit thinner, just like that. And you can also use a plugin. So if you go to the plugins panel, we've got the Stark plugin. They just came out with a new fantastic update. And you can essentially check the contrast of your items. And I had both items selected. And obviously, this does not pass accessibility. But one of the cool features that they just launched are suggestions, right? So down here, it shows you which colors might work a little bit better in this case. Now, of course, I, I definitely know that this does not pass accessibility. So we can make some changes. Let's go back to this. And this might be a white color. All of a sudden, we're, we're starting to improve that contrast a little bit. And maybe this is white as well. That, that would not be a good idea. Maybe a little bit lighter for the button. Or if you do want to introduce a little bit of color, you could do something like blue, right? And for buttons and call to actions and things like that, maybe that is the way you, you go about this, right? So we added a little bit of blue in there. I'm gonna make sure to add this blue to my colors. And this will just be called, let's say CTA. There we go. And Laura says, even though it's lo-fi, it looks fantastic, thank you. And the idea, again, if you're just joining like Laura, is you know to really start building up libraries of landing pages and templates and designs like this so that you have enough of them. So when the time comes that you have an idea or you have a client project, you don't have to rebuild this entire thing from scratch. You can essentially take this, start applying colors, drag in logos, add some text in here, define your button styles and that sort of thing. And it just starts the process so much quicker, right? You know what, that blue kind of looks, I think I like it. I think I like just a little bit of blue in there. It works. All right, so we have basically a header and we have this email section, which I might want to actually uh, turn into a component. This could be called email. And then maybe down at the bottom, since this is just a, a landing page, everything's gonna go above the fold. Maybe there are an, there's an area that showcases what clients you've worked with, for example. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle drag one out, maybe I'll round up the corners just a little bit, apply my gray, 
And that would be the actual logo of this company. And then maybe to the right, let's go for 16 pixels, there'll be a longer area, which is maybe the actual, maybe the name of the company, right? Something like that. And I can just drag out a few of them, maybe one in the center and then one over to the right. And of course that could be used for absolutely anything, but this looks pretty good. I'm kind of digging it. All right. So we've got landing page number two, a little bit of a different style, but we still have been using some of the same elements like our header text and, you know, the links at the top and the same colors and that sort of thing. Let's go for something a little bit different. I'm going to drop this down just like this, and this will be landing page number three. This one's going to be quite a bit different and have some different elements in there as well. Don't need the blob. There we go. And Vipin says you were going to show Stark plugin again after changing the color. Oh yeah, so if we do something like this, right? Let's hop in here. I have the blue selected. I also have the background color selected. If I go back to the Stark plugin and check the contrast now, still doesn't pass accessibility. It's a little bit better, but it does give me suggestions. So if I did go ahead and let's say change the background color to something much darker like this, and then I checked Stark one more time, all of a sudden we're starting to see some check marks. So very important uh, to really focus on accessibility, especially when you're designing your actual projects. These are just mock-ups, uh, just basically for the designer. It's not really gonna be seen by anybody else, but very important, once you get to the high fidelity phase, definitely keep checking accessibility to make sure that colors don't clash well with each other. Just because, just because you can see this gray on this white background doesn't mean everyone can. There's also color blindness and there's a lot of different visual impairments that you may not think about, but you should be thinking about and a plugin like Stark can absolutely help with that. So for this one here, maybe I'll just grab the, all this information, right? And just move it on over to the right hand side. Let me grab the social icons, change those. There we go. I may change the, it's a little bit squishy over here to the right and left. So I may actually bring this in a touch, like 130 pixels, something like that. There we go. That looks pretty good right about there. Just so it's not super squishy. Very rarely do you land on a website and everything is, is like right at the edges of the website. Very rarely, unless you have the, the actual browser kind of squished in a little bit. So even for these landing pages up here, I, I would probably go through honestly and just make some changes like this and just bring things in just like that. Uh, Laura is asking, have you planned a second part where you will make these high fidelity? I haven't planned one yet, but once we do get to the quick mock-up plugin towards the end of the stream, you're going to see if you use that plugin, how easy it is to kind of convert things into high fidelity. But I may touch on that at some point as well, right? There we go. Bring that in and whoop. all right, perfect. Okay. So back to this one. What we may want on the left hand side is maybe a, a full width image. So for that, what I can do is I can actually, I can start using, giving you a hint at the quick mock-up plugin. Of course, I could go ahead and grab a rectangle, draw one out about halfway, just like this, right? Change the color, that sort of thing, just so it's, it just kind of looks like, right? You can just leave it like that, right? However, if I hop into the quick mock-up plugin, they have a bunch of different elements. And of course you could choose different themes, but we're gonna save that for later. I'm gonna choose the regular theme and I'm gonna find the image. I'm gonna just drag in this image here, move it to the back and drag it out. Make sure it snaps to the center. And now we have this really nice looking placeholder that we can use. Again, you can hop into Finder, grab an image, just drag it in there and you're good to go, right? But it kind of has these nice little mountains going on, looks like a placeholder, and you can also keep it as a placeholder. You can use a hero image, so it changes the background a little bit, but this looks pretty good right about here. And maybe for this one, instead of the links over to the left, I may just wanna shift them over to the center. And maybe I'll just add one more, just to give a little bit of variation. So again, depending on the project that I'm working on, I have something I can use. Perfect, all right. There we go, there's landing page number three. Now to kind of extend upon the idea of a hero image, if I duplicate this over for landing page number four, 
what I can do now is I can just drag, grab this image, drag it out across the entire width of this particular landing page. Maybe I can center these just like that. Move this over, center, and these buttons as well. Now, what we're definitely seeing, we're, we're seeing a lot of clashing, right? We have all this these elements in the foreground. And we've got these very distracting mountains and the, the moon or sun or whatever it is in the background. So in this case, if I just click on this particular image, which is was brought in using the quick mockup plugin, I can just change it to let's say the hero image. And all of a sudden, it's a little bit easier to see, right? And now we have this full width image right over here. So let's do let's do one more just to kind of show you, you know, how how you can create various elements using these landing pages or these templates, right? And then we're gonna get into the quick mockup plugin because I think it's one of the coolest plugins that I've seen uh, in quite a while. Now for this one here, I'm gonna bring these back over this way. And this I might just, let me bring this back over. Let's go for 32 pixels, something like that. And for this one, Pop it there. Now, maybe on the right-hand side here, there might be some sort of a contact form if someone wants to uh, get in touch. Martin's asking, can you show how you to convert, can you show how to convert one of these designs to mobile, perhaps with responsive resize and or stacks? Absolutely. So for example, this one here, landing page number four, what you can do, there's a few ways you can do it, right? You can either do it from scratch, you can copy elements over, but what you can also do is if you duplicate this over, turn on responsive resize and just drag this in. Now, of course, we have a lot of elements at the top, right? Now, when you're designing for mobile, you typically would not have these links up here. You would have, let's say a hamburger menu, maybe you would have one or two links. So these would probably get deleted, right? These social icons, they would probably get moved to the bottom just like this if it's a landing page. But for everything else, like if I just drag this over, everything looks pretty good. Now, what you're looking at, the buttons are kind of squishing on top of each other. So what I would suggest is if you are, actually two things, but if you are, if you know you're gonna be designing for two different devices, definitely make sure to group things like buttons. So I'm gonna group these and just call this group buttons. And now when I go ahead and use responsive resize, those buttons stay nicely grouped together. But the second benefit of grouping these things is that you can turn on stacks. And because of the way the buttons in this particular group are laid out, it correctly defined the stack as horizontal, as you can see within the properties inspector. However, what's really cool about using stacks is that you can change the orientation at any time. So I have it set to horizontal right now. If I just press vertical, it's gonna stack those buttons on top of each other where I can now just move it into the center. Then I can even dive in here and just change the, or change the, um, the order of these buttons. I can also change the spacing as well. Let's say 24 pixels, something like that, right? And now all of a sudden I have a nice mobile design, right? Which is kind of cool. Now there's lots of ways you can do it. And of course, depending on the elements. So if, for example, this one over here, right? Let's go ahead and group some of these. Group, turn on stacks. These ones here, I'm gonna actually ungroup these and just put these into a group, right? And I'll turn on stacks, which defined it as horizontal. So again, if we're designing for mobile, I would first start get ridding, get, getting rid of some of the elements that I definitely won't have at the, at the top of a landing page. Turn on responsive resize, start, oops. Turn on responsive resize, start squishing some of these in. Now, of course, that blob is kind of over top of any, everything. Probably wouldn't have the blob, to be honest, right? Now, with these, these areas at the bottom, these probably wouldn't be laid out horizontally. So you can definitely change this to vertical and just reposition it, just like that. You can do the same thing with the buttons, and it just makes your designing so much easier. You can center these, move them in. So responsive resize definitely kind of pushes you in the right direction. But I would, I would definitely recommend to kind of explore and move things around manually. It's definitely not going to get you all the way there. And blend modes are, yes, thank you, Mike. I was just about to answer that. Uh, yes, blend modes are available on a layer level in Adobe XE. So if you have a layer selected right over here, you've got all your commonly used blend modes, normal, darken, multiply, and that sort of thing. And Danielle says, I'm new to design, but so amazed how quick you have put together these landing pages. Thank you, Danielle. And honestly, 
it just shows the power of Adobe XD. And as you start getting to use and know Adobe XD, especially when you explore the world of colors and character styles, and components and assets, things will just get so much faster. And a lot of people say, oh, I can never do what you do. Absolutely you can. I just gotta practice at it. I've been doing this for a long, long time. I've been using XD since literally the first day XD was available to the public as a beta, as Project Comet. So just keep practicing. You can absolutely do it. So over here to the right, getting back to what we were talking about, we may want a little bit of a contact form. How am I doing on time? About 15 minutes left. I definitely want to get to the quick mock-up plugin one more time. But I'm going to go ahead and move some of these, some of this information up a little bit. And that's because I do want to, I'm going to change this to hero. I want to put some additional text over here. And this might be, let's say, header number two, right? Get in touch. Now we haven't defined header number two yet, so we're going to do that. And this one might not be capitalized, and it probably doesn't have to be as bold. So this one is Lance is in the house, the creator, one of the creators of the quick mock-up plugin. You know what? Okay. Okay. Lance is in the house. Mike is in the house. I'm just going to just dive into things. So here we go. We're gonna just dive into the quick mock-up plugin. I was gonna get there in a second, but let's create one more landing page, same size. Let me put this over here. And this really shows you the benefit of using this quick mock-up plugin. So, you know, as I've showed in previous live streams and as I have showed in a video that I've uploaded to YouTube, one of the cool benefits of quick mock-up are the templates. So if you don't wanna spend the time and to build templates like we've been doing the last uh, I don't know how long, I can't keep track of time. Last little bit. You can just hop in there and grab templates. And the team, I, ooh, this is new. I think they've been adding things when I haven't even been looking. This looks different. Lance can confirm. But you can just grab a template. So if I just want, let's say, this e-commerce classic desktop template, I can just click on it, right? It's doing all these crazy things behind the scenes. And boop, there we go. And you're not, look, look at this template, it's just massive, right? And I can just dive in here and just click on various elements and I can change the style to primary call to action, that sort of thing, right? And just not to go too deep into things, but there's this, like this metadata layer. Don't worry about that. But this is basically how the plugin communicates with the, the, the various elements, which is super cool, but not today. We won't dive into that. Um, and then once you've gone ahead and, and kind of set things up in your in your pre-built template, you can apply themes. So you can just click on these various themes and it's gonna reskin the entire template, which is insane. Look at that. Look at this, I didn't have to do anything. Now, there may be times where you want full control over your templates. And this is kind of what I was getting at, right? So if I go and it is free, Big Brother is asking, is this plugin free? Absolutely, it was created by one of the teams at Adobe. So it's free, hop in there and, and Lance, who was spearheading this, is in the chat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these various templates, these various elements to create my own template. And even using these, even not using one of the templates, it still allows me to apply themes, which is super cool. So I'm gonna grab an image and drag one out. Let's say, I don't know, about this size, right? I might want to change this to a hero image, for example. Beautiful, I'm gonna go back. And I really wanna zip through this to show you how quick you can use this plugin, right? This might be, sure, a call to action. We're gonna do an H1. Ooh, look at that. All right, I can make it a little bit bigger if I wanted to. The quick brown fox. We may want some additional text. Whoops. There we go. And this might be some paragraph text. We have a bunch of different texts here. Paragraph, which automatically changes it from area text down to, sorry, point text to area text. I can squish this in a little bit, just like that. You know what? We might need some buttons. So, I'm, oops. So I'm gonna choose a button here. We've got that button there, maybe one another button. And I can duplicate that over and very similar to using components and states, you can just change some of the, the different looks of these buttons, right? Things move very quickly. Now maybe over here to the right, very similar to what we were doing over here, we might want some additional, um, you know, like a call to action to fill in a form of some sort, right? So what I'm gonna do, and Sahib is asking, is it possible to create multiple interactions with one artboard? 
Uh, it depends on what you're asking, but the short answer is probably. Using components and states, I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but if you go to letsxd.com slash states, hey Jesse, welcome. You can see how components and states kind of lets you interact with hover effects and uh, micro interactions all from a single artboard. Julia's asked me, where do you find plugins? So right down here at the very bottom, I'm gonna try to zoom in. Yeah, my, my operating system is just weird, but there's a plugins panel. Hop in there and then you can go press the plus button right at the top and you've got a ton of different plugins. This one in particular is called the Quick Mockup Plugin. Fantastic plugin. All right, back to what we're doing. Let's add some more text. This one, let's see, is H2 too big? Yeah, H2 is probably too big. Maybe H3 might be better. Get in touch. That looks a little bit better, I think, right? Possibly. Maybe it's even too big. Maybe I want to go for H4. Ah, that could be good. Ooh, Lance with the, the pro tips. There, there are three styles for elements that allow you to change colors in themes. Ooh, pro tip, Lance. Or we might some, want some more paragraph text. Maybe only two lines here, right? And then maybe we might want some sort of a label. Let's see. We've got some input fields. We've got some labels here. We've got all these different types. It works. They work great with responsive resize, so I can drag these out. Let's have a few different going down the artboard, just like that. That looks pretty fancy, right? So we've got all these different things that we're we're kind of adding. We might also want, let's say, maybe we want this circle button, which we can kind of use for now as a logo for this website, right? So we're building out this template using these pre-built elements. And Newman is saying, oh my goodness, I need this plugin. Use the plugin, it's fantastic and it's free. And I have a video on my YouTube channel um, on how this plugin works. It's just a great plugin, right? And it has all these different things. And let's see, what else can I add here? Oh, I can put more images. So maybe down here, we might want a little bit of a gallery, right? So I can have one image and maybe two images. Maybe I can even, you know what? I'm gonna stretch these out a little bit because I can, right? There we go, now we have some images. And these could be placeholders, and you're basically telling this plugin that when a new theme is applied, that they should be filled in. Of course, you can go ahead and hop over to Finder and just drag an image directly into this theme, but you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna do things from scratch. Let's see, what else could we add here? Pagination, maybe? Or we can add a button, we need another button maybe down over here, so we can actually submit this form, right? Stretch this out, works great with responsive resize. There we go. Lance says, pro tip number two, image settings. Yeah, there's a lot of different image settings here, active uh, sizes, thumbnails, uh, different asset types and that sort of thing. A lot of cool stuff in there. And let's see, what else can we add in here? We have star ratings, we have sliders. I don't know what we would use a slider for. Text area, we can use that. So maybe, let me just move some of this stuff up. We can have this over here. So we have a text area. So if someone wants to fill in like, a, let's say a comment section or something, we can do that, right? There we go, beautiful. All right, so we've gone ahead and we have added a lot of different elements using the pre-built elements that come with the quick mock-up plugin. Again, as many of you may have seen, you could just go in, find a template, and just run with that. You can definitely do that. But I wanted to kind of show you how you can also build some of these from scratch. Now here's the cool thing. Of course you could go ahead and you know dive into each button and apply your own colors and have a lot of fun, right? If you have an art, if you have an existing design system created, knock yourself out, have fun with it, right? However, I wanna get fancy. So under this theme section, which you probably saw a few minute, moments ago, or if you're just joining the stream, definitely, um, oh, Lance says, make the images small before applying the theme. Oh, the thumbnails, is that what you're uh, referring to, Lance? I think he might be, uh, or hero. Let's try a thumbnail. Maybe that's what Lance is, oh, that's kind of small. Is that the one? No, let's just go for hero. Oh, small, I see it, Lan uh, here we go, okay. All right, I got it. Oh, okay, hold on. Default and small. I think I did this right, did I do this right? All right, that looks pretty good. Perfect, okay. Now going back here, and I'm going to go into the theme section. 
And again, we have a bunch of different themes that come with this plugin. And all I have to do now is, hopefully this works, press on Radiance. Look at that. It just reskinned the entire template without me having to do anything. I just had to put in some elements, set the asset type, and I've got these really nice looking, look at that. It, that one's really cool, right? And I created this template from scratch using these elements. And what's really cool is, you know, you can keep clicking on these and it's gonna to continue to apply different images, different styles and that sort of thing. But you can also dive in here and apply different styles and states and things like that based on the theme that you chose. So as I select these, let me go to, let's say call to action. No, that, I think I broke that one. Lance, I broke it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I broke something. Oh yeah, it's kind of changing. There we go, eh, it works. But um, yeah, you can just see how easy that is, right? Look at that, that one's really cool. Where was the one that I really liked? Was it, no, was it this one? This one? I don't remember, they're all so nice. I don't know, that one looks really cool. And then you can just continue. And Laura says, this is mind blowing. And Lance says, we're planning on adding more themes and templates. Isn't this incredibly cool? So if you, if you know, again, if you have your existing design systems and you have your own ways of doing things, totally do it. But if you're, I know someone earlier was talking about being lazy, right? That theme doesn't have different color buttons. Oh, there you go. So I didn't break it. Um, someone was talking about being lazy earlier. If you're feeling lazy and you want to get a very quick start to something, this is a great way of doing it. Just grab some elements and add them directly onto your projects. And I can, you know, let's say there is a pagination, for example. I can pop this in here. I don't know why there would be a pagination in this area, but you can put a pagination. And what else do we want to put in here? A uh, radio button probably doesn't make much sense. A tool tip for, or a toggle or, I don't know, let's put a tool tip. Let's put the tool tip here. I don't know why, but we're going to do it. And even after themes have been applied, I can select the artboard, press themes, and it's going to apply the theme to all the new elements that I added, right? Isn't that super cool? And of course you can dive in here and you can customize things. If you, let's say you don't want, you like the theme, but you don't want the rounded corners, you can just, you know, unround them, right? So, you know, I've got to give a big shout out to Lance and the entire team who worked on this plugin. And they've also worked on the, the whiteboard plugin. So if you're big into collaboration, working with teams, you can start off with, look at all these templates that they've added. It's crazy. Like if you want a roadmap, for example, you've got this really nice looking roadmap. And if you're using co-editing in Adobe XD, you can very easily, oh, icons, hold on. Icons, that's a good point, Lance. Quick mock-up. And we're gonna go to one of the themes, doesn't matter. Let's go to the elements. And where are the icons? Here we go. So icons, and when you have an icon selected, you've got this whole library of icons over here. Look at this guy. This guy clearly hasn't used the quick mock-up plugin. He's not very happy. But you've got all these icons, you can just click on them. Look, this guy used the quick mock-up plugin. So, you know, very, ooh, Land says we're making a presentation plugin next. They just don't stop over there, do they? They don't stop, which is good. It's good for us, right? It's good for me too. I can show all these cool plugins off during these streams. But yeah, you've got the um, the mock-up, the uh, whiteboard plugin. So you can just, and of course, if you go ahead and group some of these elements, you turn on stacks, all of a sudden you can move things around. And what's cool about stacks is even though you've defined an orientation, which in this case is vertical, I can offset these things. So maybe this one kind of got moved to period two and I can just move these around like this. I can duplicate and just with stacks, everything just makes it so much cooler, right? And I can even add stacks in stacks, group it, stack, move these little guys around just like that, right? Delete that, I know all about it. So there you go. All right, so to recap what we've done today, we started off the masterclass just exploring how to create very simple landing pages like this. Again, this is not to be high fidelity. This is meant to build up a library of these landing pages that you can use very quickly. You can refer to, you can grab, and you can start adding in elements when the time is right and once you've kind of nailed down what elements are going to be on each landing page. So we you know, did this one, this one, we added a little bit of blue for call to action buttons and to improve accessibility a little bit. 
Ooh, Lance says more things are coming, which is user generated templates. Ooh, that would be cool. I can I can submit all of these templates and all of you can use them. Ooh, that could be cool. Although I'll probably have to make them because I they're just not up to the level of all these crazy long templates. So I'll have to do a little bit of work. But we made all these templates and then we went on to look at the quick mockup plugin and how you can use the pre-built elements and then style those using themes. Super cool stuff. If you haven't grabbed the plugin yet, download the plugin. It's completely free, made by one of the teams at Adobe. Another big shout out to all of them. And that is going to just about do it for me for today. We've got Andrew and Nick coming up with Office Hours. And then right after that, Jesse Showalter is gonna be here to wrap up the daily creative challenge. So a big thank you to Vipin and Lance and Cornell and Manir and Yasser and Mohammed and Cody and Osher and Laura and everyone else who has joined me today and all my other masterclasses. I'm gonna be back on Monday. I'm gonna be sitting down with Rachel. I think it's Rachel Smith. She's gonna be designing some really cool stuff in XD Monday and Tuesday. And then I'll be back again for my masterclass on Friday. Thanks again, everyone. And I will see you all next time.